in the last video i showed you how you can set up your windows development environment for the web development in this video i will show you how you can install the wsl so that you can set up the development environment in windows under the wsl2 which is a linux or linux whatever you want to call it so the first requirement of setting up a wsl in windows is that you should be having at least windows 10 or above and windows 11 works best so with that out of the way let's begin i am on windows 11 so i will assume that in 2023 most of you guys are on windows 11 the first thing that you will need is to start windows powershell which you can look from here and then you can type powershell and then you can run it using administrator this step is important you have to run it using administrator then once you are here you will type wsl and dash dash version so that you can see whether it is even working or not once you have this you are good to go if you don't have this press this windows button type turn on windows features you will open this turn windows features on and off you will then have to select something called windows subsystem for linux select that ok it and then it will install it will restart you come back to this page again and you can begin once that is done you run the second command to check what all distributions are available for the wsl you simply run wsl dash dash list dash dash online this will give us all the version of distros available for us to install as we can see we have ubuntu debian linux and so on I will try to install this version because I already have an Ubuntu version directly so I don't want to install that otherwise there will be a conflict. I want to install this which is the latest version of Ubuntu and this is the name. So let's copy this. Let's install wsl dash dash install. This is the command. You will paste this distro and you will simply press enter. This will start installing the entire WSL. While this is happening, you will go to Microsoft Store and you will type Windows Terminal. This is necessary so that we can have better looking terminal rather than the PowerShell. Here you will go to Windows Terminal and if it is not installed already, you will have something called get or you will have something called install. You will click on it and then you will wait for the screen to become like this where you have the option of open. And that's about it for now then you will close it and you will wait for this entire thing to work as you can see the download has been completed and now it is asking me to supply a unix username so i will supply code testing and then it will ask me for the password after it is done so i will wait and then i will supply the password so let's supply the password we will retype the password and it is done it will take some time but it will be done now we can simply clear it and we are inside our ubuntu what we will do next is we will open our windows terminal you can type it using here and here you will get this terminal you will simply open it all right the first time you will open it it will open your powershell we don't need this we will click on this thing right here the arrow drop down and we will open this version which is 2022 and you will open the ubuntu version that you have installed for us this is a new installation we'll close this and here we are this is our ubuntu our wsl is basically set up now from here onwards we will have our customized settings i will keep this settings as bare minimum as possible because the goal is to learn the web development and not how to customize the entire thing in terms of aesthetics so the only thing that you should be worrying about is we'll click on this you'll go to this settings here you will find this default here you will go to appearance and then you can select any of your theme that you want to select here okay let's select this one then apart from that you can have a font face you will have to download some sort of like a nerd font so that it is better compatibility you can google what the nerd font is you can simply install it i have a recursive font which i am using right now then the font size is going to be based on your font face so for me it is 16 line height 2 should be based on your font face for me it is 1.5 font weight is normal and none of these are there and this is like a bar and that's it once you have that you will you can save it 
you can go to advanced and if you want any settings here you can do that as well whatever you define on the defaults will be available throughout your entire system okay so that's number one so that is the setting that is done on the windows terminal end so that you have better fonts better uh, color scheme things like that so from here onwards i will show you how you can set up the terminal environment or the development environment for web development inside this wsl you already have vs code installed based on the first video that i showed you if you haven't watched it just go and watch that video i will link it in the top of the card once you're back here after installing the vs code this is what you will do the first command that should run on ubuntu is sudo apt update this will ask for your password you will simply supply the password and then you will wait for your network to download all the outdated uh, packages so the sudo apt update command in ubuntu is simply going to refresh the packages right and it will not download anything it will just simply refresh the library and will show you how many packages you have out of date as you can see right here so then you will write sudo apt upgrade and this will install everything that is out of date so you will simply press enter and it will start downloading pretty much everything and will bring your system up to date with the latest ubuntu environment cool now that is done let's install sudo apt zsh sudo apt installed zsh this is a shell that is required for better customization on this end now this is the aesthetic part if you don't want to do it you don't have to worry about it simply press enter and this will simply install the zsh once that is done we will go back to our browser and we will search for zsh syntax highlighting we will also search for auto suggestions and we will also search for something called oh my zsh the order of installation will be oh my zsh then auto suggestion then syntax highlighting so we will click on this site oh my zsh dot sh we will install this we will simply copy this and here we will simply paste it and then clone it yes and everything is done with supply of password and this is it this is your default zsh that is set up then you will go back close it click on this auto suggestion right here which is a github you will click on this install.md then you will search for oh my zsh you will copy this from here you go back paste you will install it you will go back to this syntax highlighting you will again go inside this github then you will go to install md here you will look for oh my zsh right here you will copy it you will come back you will paste it and you will clone it once that is done you can have code dot as a starter point and open it press enter it is installing a vs code server on your ubuntu so that it can connect over windows vs code you will let it download you will let it install and then this will open your vs code if it has already been installed on on your windows which is what we did in the first video you can trust it you can say no trust it does not matter okay once that is done you can close this now type code tilde slash forward slash dot z s h r c and then enter this will open your z s h r c file okay now this is my vs code you will scroll down to the bottom where you find this thing called plugins and here you will simply paste this the first is syntax highlighting the order does not matter at this point the second is this auto suggestions like this once that is done i will suggest certain aliases n which is going to be pnpm which is something that we will install and i think this alias is enough for us now we will close this we'll go back to this and the trick is either you source this like so and then you can see you have the syntax highlighting which is green if any program is installed it will be green otherwise it will be red for example git is installed and nvm is not installed so that's number one second is that this is syntax highlighting and this is auto completion 
if you have already done some sort of like a command previously you will have that as an auto completion you can type half of it and then you can press the arrow right arrow and it will be completed it does not matter how big that command is so we are good to go to install our node now for installing the node we'll go back in the google and we will type nvm install then we will look for the github of nvm sh node version manager once we are on this page nvm sh nvm we'll go here we will click on this installing and updating install and update script you will copy this you will come back to your terminal you will paste it and you will simply run it and this is something that you have to verify whether this is added in your zsh rc file or not so let's copy this entire thing if it is not added we have to add it so we will say code i will just press the right arrow key for auto completion and we will press enter okay now let's scroll down and thankfully for us it is already added so now we can stop it and this set up our nvm so if we do nvm for that to work we have to reopen it now if we do nvm okay we have it installed and that is good to go so what is this nvm for well this nvm will help us install node so let's install it nvm install now if you want the latest lts version you will do dash dash lts and if you want the latest node version you will do node so let's go with the dash dash lts which is the latest lts version which is 18.18.2 and now we have node setup so if i type node now as you can see it is already green and we have this as a version to set up the default version you will type nvm alias default and then you will type the version entirely 18.18.2 this will set up your default version so that means anytime you open a new terminal with the same ubuntu version and you type node you will find that it is already 18.18.2 then what is this nvm in the first place if you type nvm list you will see that you have bunch of available node patterns right node environments so nvm help us to have multiple node environments so for example right now i have 18 which is the lts version but i also need to have the latest node version which is 21 at the time of this recording so i will do nvm install and node this will install the latest node version and now we have two node version now if i type node version version this this is my version okay now if i type nvm list you will see that my default is pointing towards this 18 version that means if i open this new terminal and i type node version like so by default we have 18 but if we want to use this 21 we can use it how we can have nvm use 21 and this will be using 21 so if i now do node version version this is the 21 so that means based on the project that you are in you can utilize whatever you want to use so that is the plus of using nvm to uninstall the things that you don't want to use the version that you don't want to use you simply say nvm uninstall type the version name now if you have two version which is only differentiated in terms of minor version like for example if you have 18.18.1 and 18.18.2 then here you will have to pass the entire thing similar here as well right you will have to use 18.18.1 but here we have only one 18 and another one is 21 so we can just pass the 18 and it will figure it out so i will uninstall 18 now this node version is uninstalled if i say nvm list this is the only one now the problem here is that it is still pointing to 18.18.2 that means it is not available so if you open this new one like this and you will type node you will see that it has no node command so you can simply either in that terminal or here you can simply say alias default 21 and now anytime you open a new terminal node version will be available okay so now we have git and we have node and we have wsl and we have windows terminal and we have vs code installed 
all the settings of the VS Code is as similar as in the first video. So watch that video. Now the only thing that I will say is inside the node and this is something that you could do the same in the Windows version as well. If I have forgotten, you can just use these commands there as well. So you will type something called core pack, which is bundled inside the node version 18 as well as anything above and you will say enable. This enables the core pack. Now the core pack will help us change the package manager. What is a package manager? Well, node comes with bundled with NPM and NPM is a node package manager. Right now the version is 10.2.0. Now in 2023, NPM is greater than YARN in terms of performance, in terms of its speed. However, PNPM is still greater than NPM. Okay. So let's check this PNPM version. This is my PNPM version. In order to make sure that this works, you have to enable the core pack. Also, if you want the latest one every time, you can have core pack prepare PNPM rate latest dash dash activate. This will activate the latest version. Now, if you check this yarn version as well, you will have the yarn version as well. Now, if you say prepare yarn at the rate latest activate, you will see that it is not able to find things. So let's go here and supply the version. Let's say three. This will enable the yarn version three. Now, if I do yarn version, it will be 3.6.4. For most part, 1.22.19 is the things that you will use. But I will always suggest go with the PNPM. Now, remember in the alias of our ZSHRC file, we said key N is the PNPM alias. So now if we do this and this, this is PNPM. And that's it. You have set up the WSL. You have set up the VS code. You have set up the node get PNPM everything on windows so that this environment now can be used for web development in the next video of this installation series i will show you how you can set up the tailwind in a very proper and much better way than the default nextjs that it provides so till then bye